guys probably doesn't need an introduction. <laughs> but I want you guys to understand before Grayson comes up that this is not just a football player talking to you, it's a man of God who took up his own time, not having to be here, but volunteering with his time to come and share his testimony, the power of God, his life with you guys. So now can I get a really big round of applause for Grayson Lane. <laughs> church, but it would not be, you know, with my parents and kind of some mornings, I'm like, you know, I'd rather stay asleep than, you know, have to get up and, 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 and go to church. Um, and and that, all, that all changed. You know, I go, I go to college um, at the University of Virginia, which in itself was, you know, it was not on my radar. Virginia was not on my radar while I was being recruited to play football. Um, they were the last school that I visited, but I fell in love with the place. Um, and looking back on it, it's been probably the biggest blessing in my life is, is going to the University of Virginia because of the people that I was able to meet there and uh, the people who were able to, to point me in the right direction. Um, and, and so, you know, when I first got there uh, to the University of Virginia, uh, the starting quarterback at the time was a guy named Mike Rocco. And, you know, growing up, um, wanting to be the hot shot, QB, whatever, um, you think that a quarterback is, uh, or a football player in general, they, they're the party type, they're this type, that type, and I quickly understood that this wasn't Rocco. Um, the guy didn't drink, he didn't, he wasn't a partier, and I, I, I talked to one of my teammates, and I was like, what's up with this guy? What, he, he could have it all. And, and the guy said, well, he's, he's a huge Christian. He, he loves the Lord. And, you know, I, I, I considered myself a Christian, but I wasn't, for some reason, there was a difference between him at that point and me. And I wanted to know what that was. And so I, uh, I walked up to him one day and I was like, hey, is there any way I can follow you to church? Um, instead of pitching a ride, because I wanted to drive and, and know where that church was. And, and I did, I followed him to church and it wasn't something crazy that the pastor said. It wasn't something, you know, just life changing that happened. But it was a moment where I decided on my own that I wanted to learn more about Christ. I wanted to, to really you know, bridge that gap that I was missing maybe whenever I was y'all did. Um, and so Rocco really jump-started that into me then wanting to learn more. So I reached out to my FCA chaplain uh, at the time, who was George Morris. And he, uh, he really kind of helped me understand what I was maybe missing. And that was the true relationship that you can have with Jesus Christ. Not just understanding that there's one out there, that there's a relationship that you might be able to have, but actually being involved in that relationship, talking with him. I remember one day I was walking to class and my heart was on fire at this point for, for Christ. And I was walking to class and you start to realize that when you pray, like whenever I was y'all's age, I probably prayed only two times a day <coughs> on average, which was before I ate and before I went to sleep. Um, and the other times would be if I was in trouble or <laughs> if, if I needed something. Um, but I, I caught myself and I was walking to class and I was just, I was kind of talking. And you start to understand that you can just have a conversation 
Like, to me, Jesus is not only my father, but he's my best friend. So I'm sitting here walking to class by myself, my book bag on, and, and I'm talking to my best friend, and I see somebody walking by me, and they're looking at me like I'm crazy, because I'm, like, murmuring to my imaginary friend beside me. And, and it's, they just don't understand that I'm sitting here, and I'm talking about my day with, with my Savior. And, you know, when, when your heart just kind of comes alive, I'm walking to class, and I see a tree, and I'm like, that's the best looking tree I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's, 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 it's glorious. You know, you made that tree, God. That's a great job. And, and that's kind of how I felt. Um, and so I, I started going to church because I wanted to, because I wanted to learn more. I wanted to build that relationship. Um, and I got involved. I started eating lunch with the pastor and learning more that way. And it was amazing because I was, I was, I got to the point where, you know, I would follow my friends to church, maybe like this to, to have a good time to, to maybe hear somebody speak or to play the games and I went from doing that to understanding what the real purpose is of being here which is which is learning more about Christ and, and growing uh, in that relationship and and then I was able to kind of maybe help others and bring others along and I had a I have a truck that fits about five people comfortably and I ended up getting six football players in there to go to church on, on Sundays which was just it was awesome to see God working in their lives, and uh, honestly, by the end of it all, um, you know, it was it was amazing. But I want to kind of shift gears now and talk about how, throughout this whole transfer process, that was at Virginia. Now I'm here, obviously. Um, there were other things other than that relationship that I had with uh, with teammates and through my church that were not going so well at the University of Virginia, and so. I wasn't happy there, and this is probably now seven months ago. It's not that far far ago. I was in I was in Jessup, Georgia, a small town uh, where I'm from, and I had about two weeks at home. And I had about two weeks to really try to figure out what I was going to do next. But I didn't I didn't want to go back to Virginia. It had nothing to do with my relationship with the church or the people. I was still in contact with George Morris, who's the FCA chaplain. I met with him every Wednesday while I was there uh, with a personal Bible study. Just just trying to know more, and, and that relationship will stay with me the rest of my life. But I, I needed a change, and and so my mom, the only way that we know as a family to go about something like that, and we have no you know, earthly idea of what to do, is we go to God. And it was her birthday, I remember it was May 12th, it was her birthday, I searched every opportunity out there about where I can go to school other than Virginia. If there was anybody out there they would want me, um, and it was just, it was hard. I had no idea where my future was gonna go. And so we walked around the neighborhood. Um, I remember it like it was yesterday. We walked around the neighborhood, we started praying together, and we got back to the house, and I said, I'm just gonna go back up to the school one more time, because I, my high school head coach had been helping me try to find you know, other schools. He'd been sending out game film, he'd been talking to these other coaches. And I, I walk up there, well, I drive there, then I walk into the school. Um, and I'm sitting there waiting on him, and all of a sudden this coach comes around the corner. And I had no idea who it was, but he was wearing a jacket exactly like John was. And, and it was actually one of the outside linebackers coach, I think, Coach Eckler, or is he inside? He was inside. Inside linebacker coach. I'm, I'm the Dolphin, so I don't you know, hang out. <laughs> but, I, you know, I, I should have known because, honestly, the guy changed my life because he, he started talking with me. And, honestly, the next day, my dad and I were in the car going back to Virginia to tell those coaches that I wasn't, I wasn't going to be able to come back to school there um, because I, I just I needed, I needed a different route. And, and all of that to say this is that when you don't think that you have something, when you, when you don't know where your next turn is going to lead you, um, the only way that I know which way to go is, you know, I, I go to God. And then he, he then will tell me or show me whether it's what I want or not, whether it's what I think or not, he's going to show me the right path. And that's something that I've learned more so in college than I did at y'all age. Um, but it's something I want to be able to tell y'all because it's something that if I did know at y'all age, I, who knows what, you know, my life would be like. But honestly, Jesus is, it's hard because he, he's done everything, honestly, and he will do everything for you guys. He, 
I've reached a point where, you know, my first encounter with all of that was 12 years old. Um, my grandfather actually passed away when I was 12 of cancer, and I really didn't know, you know, what being saved meant until until then. I got saved at my grandfather's funeral, and that's what jump started me at God's age. And you don't know how Jesus will work in your life. Um, you know, I didn't know that it was, you know, at my grandfather's funeral that something actually good could come out of that. But, you know, it, in life circumstances and in the hard times, you always got a friend. You've got your Heavenly Father. He's a good, good Father. Y'all sing about it. You talk about it every day. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of share with you how he's, he's worked in my life. He's been a great father to me. He's been a great friend while I'm talking to him on my way to class. And uh, I just encourage you guys to, to do that as well. So thank y'all for having me.